Everybody, thanks for listening to the Triple B Experience. I'm your host, Bad Bubba Brewer. I just want to give you guys a little bit of insight about me, what makes me tick, what really gets me going, what pulls my jets when need be. Yeah, I love professional wrestling. I wrestled for 17 years. And also, I'm a huge Steeler fan. I collect the comic books all my life. I'm going to talk about the stuff that I want to talk about. True experiences that are entertaining. And we recant them stories to you, the masses, out there in podcast land. Join me on this crazy journey called the Triple B Experience. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Triple B Experience I'm the host that you guys all listen to and know. My name is Bad Bubba Brewer. And I'm here, episode 17 of the Triple B Experience. Brought to you on all your social media devices, iHeart, iTunes, IdiotRadio.net, YouTube, and numerous other ones. You can get myself on Facebook. You can hit like on the Triple B Experience page. Hit like. You can follow it on there. You can uh, check me out. If you have questions about the show, you can email me at badbubba77 at gmail.com. I'm trying to get a lot more fans in. I'm hoping you can go back. And you can listen all through one through now, which will be 17 of the shows. It takes a couple days for it to get produced by Todd DeFazio down in Pittsburgh at his kick-ass studio. So I'm just looking for some more support. I'm just doing what I'm doing. And I got a couple stories to tell you on this episode of the Triple B Experience. But first, I want to say a shout out. To Troy Fritz, who's doing a hobby uh, show November 9th. Check with Troy Fritz. Um, He's going to have a huge heavyweight title belt for the individuals who are that 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 capture the prize at the model. And yours truly is MCN. So hopefully I don't mess up everybody's name like I did last time. There was a lot of vowels in a lot of names, if you know what I'm saying. And I was trying to enunciate and uh, pronounce the names so I didn't make anybody mad. I did the best I could, and I got some cool-ass Ligonier Valley uh, Oreo donuts, which were actually pretty good. It put me in a sugar shock. So, and I, right now, I won't eat those kind of donuts because right now I'm trying to get back on track. I got a MyFitness app. I'm trying to watch what I eat again because I've been going off and leading on to a trail of devastation just eating every fucking thing I see. And I am not kidding. I was so, I've been so hungry until I decided to, you know, buckle up and do what I got to do. I, uh, I got a couple, I got this week. I started this week. Um, I don't know when it's going to be, uh, this podcast will be out, but I'm taping it, uh, on the, this is Wednesday. I'm doing a show Wednesday night, late, on October, so it's the uh, the thirtieth, I believe. So, wait, no, it's not. Hold on, hold on one second. I'm gonna look at my phone. Yeah, it is October thirtieth. I two concussions. I, I man, I can't tell anymore. But anyway, uh, I'm doing a show right now, Wednesday night, October thirtieth. Uh, I'm gonna send it out to Todd, and when it gets out, it will be out uh, very very soon. But uh, I, I just want to tell about the story of how I got some uh, tickets. I went to the Ravens Steelers game uh, down in Pittsburgh when they were at home. And me, Tammy, and uh, Mike and Amy Shellhammer, uh, we had, we, I started drinking <laughs> at 20 after 7 in the morning, ladies and gentlemen. 20 after 7. Um, now, now, kids out there, don't do this. Don't don't drink while you have an icy light in one hand and a rock star in the other. It's not good. You can't do that. So we were on our way, and we went down, and we hooked up with uh, Kevin Adams' son. He throws. He he actually runs and organizes the uh, 
Bang Bang Steeler Gang with Arthur Motes. And uh, we, we had to pay each, we each, each of us had to pay 30 bucks a head, the four of us. So we went to this tailgate party, and I tell you what, I saw a huge gallon of Captain Morgan and Coke, and I started uh, taking off the bottle, and it was game time, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, I already was pre-partying the 20 after 7, but uh, I had some Facebook Live videos. Um, Kevin's son, it was, you know, I met him for the first time, and the tailgate party was phenomenal. Um, Arthur Motes was cool. I had him uh, do a video. I had me, <laughs> me doing a video of a beer bong. Um, I got kicked out of the flip cup game, which I thought when you played flip cup, you had to fill the goddamn thing up the whole way. Uh, the beer to the thing, uh, the guy was on my team or beside me. He had it up halfway. I said, Hey kid, if you're going to do it, you got to do it right. You got to fill it up the whole way. And he's like, he's like, Hey buddy, uh, you think you could sit this one out? He must not like how I was playing. So, but the, the tailgate party was cool. They could have had a, I didn't eat too much food. I think I had a hot, two hot dogs without no bun, which probably wasn't cool, and it wasn't cool. Um, and then uh, we partied there until, you know, 12 o'clock because you want to get into the Steeler game. When you go to the Steeler game, you want to get in at least an hour so you get the seat and get situated because if you got your tickets, you got to go through security. It's a hell of a long time to get to your seats and going through people and getting to where you needed to go and go to the bathroom and do all that shit. So I want I, – oh, and we had good seats. We were in the uh, the championship uh, club seats under the scoreboard there. That new that new facility seating that they did because they closed up the end zone out there underneath uh, you know the goalpost and stuff. But anyway, I had great seats. I did a Facebook live. You couldn't even understand me. I don't have any clue what I was saying. Uh, some people that told me like Bubba, maybe you should get that video off. I was like, ah, uh, I don't care. So. Well, anyway, this is not good. Now, this story, uh, the, the, the the situation that happened is not good. I'm not proud of it, but uh, it's a story nonetheless. And that's why the experiences that I do that I can talk about on my podcast, that's what I do. So I uh, told Tammy, I said, I got to use the restroom. So I went to the restroom and I went to the restroom, you know, did my what I had to do. I came back. I sat down. Maybe that was my mistake. I sat down, and I seen. I was watching the game. It was all blurry and hazy. Um, yeah, it was it was bad. I used I've been going to Steeler games since I was a kid. I was a season ticket holder for seventeen years. Partied like a rock star, ladies and gentlemen. But this tailgate party I went to, this atmosphere, and also being 48 years old and not being a spring chicken, maybe has its deterrent on me. Well, I went and sat in the seat there. And I was watching the game and it was getting all whatever and it was bad. Uh, let's just say it was not a four star studded event of yours truly. It was not good. Um, let's just say when I turned to the side and which was my left hand over my, my left shoulder, I seen a lady with a silver badge on her, on her shirt. And I was like, oh, fuck. And I just grabbed my, my wallet, which I'm 48 years old, and I do have a Marvel wallet. I don't care. I think it's pretty cool. I showed her. I just gave her my ID. I didn't say nothing. I just like, there you go. I didn't say I just gave her the ID. I'm texting Tammy incoherently on, and I was like, Tammy, the cops are here. They're surrounding me. I don't even know if I spelled surrounding right. So she, I, I, I remember her coming down, and she told the officer, <laughs> she's like, they were going to call the ambulance on me. That's how bad I was, ladies and gentlemen. The first time ever I ever party for a Steeler I almost had the ambulance called on me. That's how bad I was. This is not an experience that I, you know, I'm just telling you because I I had a good time and all of a sudden it went downhill after that. Um, but she told him, she's like, we, uh, officer, uh, they were going to get the paramedics, ambulance and stuff. And she's like, oh, officer, we, we had to flu at the house. <laughs> and the officer's like, hey, he feels kind of hot. And I'm like, holy shit, I'm going to get it for public drunkenness. 
There's no doubt about it. So Camby with her, I don't know, her mystical powers saved me from getting a public drunkenness and going to the drunk tank at Pittsburgh this year with the Ravens going to the tailgate party with Bang Bang Steeler Gang going down with the shell hammers. I was the one driving too, okay? So, but I don't know. But like, I just want to say this, that I rose out from a phoenix out of the ashes and we all went back out and we were watching the game and I was, I don't know what happened. Like it was Duck Dodgers came in and Juju fumbled that ball. We lost the game. But let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that was the best still, Steeler tailgate party I've ever been to. So if you ever get tickets, it's a home game and you want to go and you don't want to take a whole bunch of stuff because when you go to the bar, guys, you're going to spend big money anyway. So I spent, me and Tammy, it was $60 for us. It was well worth it. You got to hang out with Arthur Motes and you got to have a good time with some cool ass Steeler fans. So that was the, uh, the coolest part, but uh, not the coolest part was almost getting a public drunkenness. So, uh, you know, but we have, we didn't win the game. You know what I mean? I went home and passed out at 8.30. And I went to work the next day. So that was one of my experiences. That's the first experience of my entire life going to a Steeler game where I almost got it for public drunkenness. And I, I'm usually the smart one. I don't know what it was. Um, maybe it was the beef jerky that they ate at Sheets. I don't know. But let's just say, ladies and gentlemen, you do not drink a rock star in one hand and Iron City in the other. Icy Light. Sorry, not Iron City. So that's my experience of going to the Steeler game. And also, me and Mav just went down to see All Elite Wrestling down in Pittsburgh last week. I'm getting all these experiences, what I've done the last time since we actually had I had a podcast. Uh, me and Mav went to see All Elite. It was a phenomenal show. It was fucking epic. The crowd was intense. And we were just going to the merchandise table, mind you. Okay. Two ex-workers just going to the merchandise table. Mav just wanted to see these shirts. You know what I mean? He wanted to get some shirts. I think he bought his friend, uh, his, his, you know, he was getting shirts for somebody and looking for himself. And that's when Cody Rhodes and them sides busted through the thing. And all of a sudden we're, we're going to the, we're going to the fucking merchandise table. And all of a sudden all fucking hell breaks loose. They're fucking fighting. So what do I do? Hey, when I see a TV camera, I'm like, woo. So I was like jumping up and down and I wasn't, I was just cheering and laughing, but I didn't know I got on TV. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you know what I mean? Everybody's like, oh, I'm getting it on my phone. They're sending me steals. Donnie Dawson sent me this steal. That was funny. You know what I mean? So I was like, cool. You just got to be at the right place at the right time. Look, I, TNT it probably got 4 million viewership and they're, and they're got a picture of me cheering at the concession stand fight, which was pretty epic. I thought, you know, Cody Rhodes is a big dude. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I towered over a couple of those guys, you know what I mean? And I'm a big dude, but I'm, I'm an old man, but I just thought it was funny. So there we got the experience of me going down to steal their game and almost getting arrested for public drunkenness. Me and Mav going to the merchandise table and uh, I get, on TNT live millions. Like you can catch it on YouTube. I'm the dude. I'm the fucking big dude with the blue tie dyed hoodie on cheering. Woo. And I look like I am about 425 pounds. I look like a big extra Italian off of the fucking Sopranos, you know, going back and forth, you know, and I didn't, I only had a beer. I didn't even go crazy down there. Cause I had to work the next day and I did go to work the next day. You know what I mean? So I just want to say these two experiences were pretty good. You know, I always love going to a Steeler game, but sometimes I do like watching them at home. We're going to get to talk about the Steelers here in my next, uh, on the next segment. But I just wanted to talk about this segment, about the two uh, trips to Pittsburgh that I made recently on my, on this podcast. One I almost got arrested and one I got on TV. Hey, fuck it. If there's a, if there's a radio station or a TV uh, camera guy or whatever I'm getting on. You can call me an attention whore. I don't care, but I'm going to do whatever I can. Cause you never know. I, you could have said, Oh, I knew him when you just never know people. So ladies and gentlemen, this is bad Bubba Brewer. And you're listening to the triple B express triple B express. No, the triple B experience. I was almost in the express 
going to Pittsburgh that night because I was in the express lane trying to get home because uh, it was a bad, bad evening. So once again, guys, you're listening to the Triple B Experience. I'm your host, Bad Baba Brewer. The Triple B Experience. We'll return after these messages. For all your heating and cooling needs, service, and installation, contact our friends at Complete Comfort Heating and Air Conditioning. 412-513-3001. Doesn't your family deserve Complete Comfort? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Triple B Experience. This is podcast episode number 17. And you can get them on SoundCloud, iHeart, YouTube, and IdiotRadio.net, and also all the social media devices known to mankind. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I just happened to watch the lovely Steelers get by the uh, Indianapolis Colts, barely. So they got their record to 4-4. Four and four. Um, This Mason Rudolph error is very slow. It's uh, very short passes, and uh, by God, thank God, our defense, which we do have 10 number one picks in there, can actually do some kind of stuff, but they actually knocked uh, Jacob Brissett out of the game today. Now, I don't know when this will be getting out there to you guys, but actually, uh, Mitch uh, Fitzpatrick scored on a 93-yard interception and we kicked a lot of field goals today. We're not driving the ball, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Jalen Samuels had to be in for James Conner, who's out with a shoulder injury. We beat the Dolphins last week. We are now 4-4. Four and four. Um, But we could have lost this game in the, in the last two minutes of it. So thank God Adam Viteri hooked it left. Thank God he hooked it left. So now we got the, uh, the Rams coming up. And hopefully we can get to five and four. And we have to count on the Patriots Sunday night against the Ravens to beat them. That's, and I'm not watching that game because I hate both those fucking teams. And I'm not wasting my time watching either one. I don't care. I'll just watch something else on TV. But it's not going to be that one. But actually, the, the negative thing that I do see for the Steelers is... Our receivers aren't catching balls, and we're just doing short passes. And it's just, we're very, very conservative, which I don't mind. But when we have the ball with 2.48 seconds, we need to get a first down. And then the Colts would have never had the ball in the first place. We could have ran the ball off. But in that last drive, the Steelers couldn't get the first down. Their play calling is fucking atrocious, Um, and I'm not a big Tomlin fan, uh, as you guys all know, and I won't be a Tomlin fan until he goes, and I think we just need a whole new structure of coaching. I don't care. Even though Butler's got the defense, it doesn't matter to me because they have 10 number one picks, and we should be that good. We lost Stephon to it for the rest of the season, and you can see today's game against the Colts. Uh, that middle is a little bit not as tough as it was with Stephon to it. Uh, Matt got some yards. I think he got pretty close to 100 yards. And then last week when we had Miami at home on a Monday night, Miami was up 14 nothing, and I have no clue on that what happened there. But hopefully they uh, they crapped the bed, and thank God. Um, as of right now, they were beating the Jets, so I don't know if they're going to be – win their first game of the season, but they almost won their first game of the season against the Steelers. And we had uh, Duck Dodgers show up in uh, L.A. and beat the Chargers barely. Um, yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not getting all sucked into the, the Duck Dodgers dynasty as a quarterback. He's a third-string quarterback in my eyes. Um, he doesn't need to be a starter. And Mason Rudolph right now is our starter but not by much because this team is still Ben Roethlisberger's team. Win, lose, or draw come next year. Um, And that concussion, I think, is still deterred. Mason Rudolph to be actually, um, he's gun shy, and that's my opinion, of getting the ball out there. But his receivers got to catch the ball. 
they hit their hands, they have to catch it. Uh, Juju had a ball bounce off. It was an INT the Colts got due to that one. That's inexcusable. Uh, Juju's not been the number one receiver this year in my eyes. He's got a long way to go. Um, he just got to keep focused and break off for, from the uh, secondary and give him a little bit of room. He's not getting open. So they're double covering him too. I understand that. But he's got to get open a little bit. And he's got to make those catches when they're getting thrown and hitting them in the hands. So, and we also cut uh, Dante Moncrief, thank God, saved us. Uh, well, he's $9 million, not well spent. So hopefully we get a compensatory pick next year from the uh, Le'Veon Bell situation. And actually, they were looking at Le'Veon Bell to trade for him because, like I said before, Connor went out with a shoulder injury. Um, Connor is not durable enough for me. He's always getting hurt. Um, I like him as a, you know, as a person. Um, I mean, I like him as a Steeler, but it's a, we need another running back. Uh, you can't fumble in crucial situations and he's always hurt. And he's got to be more durable. He's got to get more tough. I know he, he beat cancer and God bless him for that, but he's got to be a little bit more tougher. And uh, he rushed for 145 yards against the Dolphins, but anybody could go against the Dolphins and rush for 145 yards because they're the Dolphins and they're pieces of crap. So, we're now four and four. Um, if we'd have been four and five, I'd have lost my shit. Um, and I've been like, holy heck, because uh, that's just unexcusable. This year has been a roller coaster ride, ladies and gentlemen, on the Triple B experience that follows the Pittsburgh Steelers in Western Pennsylvania. And it's just something that we have a hard time swallowing in this area, especially me. I don't say we have to win every game, but at least put uh, 150% and try to get some good play calling and thank God our defense because if they would have had their first string quarterback set, if they would have had Hilton, their receiver, it could have been a little different of a uh, game today. We would have lost to the Colts, but you know what? We won the Colts. We beat them. And uh, that's all I care about. It makes my day a little better. And anybody that's a Steeler fan, it makes their day a little better when the Steelers win because everybody can get pissed off and get rowdy when the Steelers lose, which I have been uh, numerous times in my life. You know what I mean, ladies and gentlemen? So uh, I just want to say we're four and four. Uh, this is the Triple B experience. And like I said, this is the episode 17. And I appreciate everybody's support. And I support their like and share. And just, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, just take a listen and a gander to the Triple B experience podcast. You know what I mean? Wherever you do, just put it in there and try to get a good chuckle about my experiences and everything else. And also I want to talk about the Pirates. And if anybody's a Pirate fan, which I've been all my life, they cleaned house. So they got rid of Neil Huntington. They kept their owner. Uh, unless that dude starts showing up some money. Um, I'll never go to Seven Springs and ski because I'm not a skier. I never was. The last time I skied was at Hidden Valley. And I knocked uh, almost, uh, almost knocked Shane Brandenburg off the ski lift. The guy wanted me to jump. I told him, fuck you. And I went back down to the ski lodge and had a couple shots of gold slogger. And that was in the early 90s. And I never been back to a ski lodge since. And I'm not going to. So I'll never give him any money at Seven Springs. And I'm not going to give him any money until he starts shelling out some money to get the Pittsburgh Pirates into some kind of contention and some kind of a winning formula so they can actually be competitive and compete. You know, the, the Washington Nationals, Pittsburgh's at, before the break was better than the Washington Nationals. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. They were they three games better than the Washington Nationals, and then they just went teacup over a, ass end and just made a debauchery about the rest of the season. And then the Washington Nationals have become your World Series champions. So I, I don't know what it takes, what kind of – particular fortitude it takes for individuals to become a winning team but the Pittsburgh Pirates need to be a winning team as Steelers in my eyes are a winning team but they need to get better all the injuries that we've had it's like a mass 4077 unit uh and and the Penguins are always competitive and they don't lose very often and they're always in the hunt for the playoffs so we can get the trifecta of local Western Pennsylvania pro sports teams to get their asses in gear and formulate some kind of winning pattern 
to enshrine our the fans and myself something to cheer for and something to go and see because I don't mind paying money and seeing winning and and people that actually try. If they don't try, I'm not going to give them any money. Like Bob Nutting has not tried to make the Pirates competitive or has he tried to make them a fucking winning team. So, I mean, I don't give a rat's ass about the Bay City Rollers and every type of fireworks known to mankind on Friday night or, or free Pez bobblehead night. I, I don't care about that. I care about being a competitive team on the baseball field. It's my little uh, soap opera box on the Pittsburgh Pirates and actually make the Pirates competitive before I die would be great. Uh, who wouldn't want to see the Pirates in some kind of playoff contention again? That little three-year run was good, but it didn't last long. It just just could have lasted a lot longer and signed all that nucleus of a team to make them a playoff caliber team. So that's my rant on the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates. And I also just want to say, uh, last night, yesterday, I went to Todd DeFazio's house in his studio, and I love his studio, and we did the uh, Triple B, Double D Heavyweight Podcast. And that podcast, we're going to talk about pro wrestling from the WWE to All Elite. We did it, uh, you have to watch it, NWA, and we talk about the pay-per-views. So hit like, hit share, look us up on Facebook. You're going to see it. It was a great show. We're doing something that we love to do. So yours truly is actually doing two shows now. Okay. One where I actually got a script, and that's the uh, Triple B Double D Wrestling Heavyweight Wrestling Podcast because I have a script on that. This Triple B experience, I don't have a script. I don't need a script. I just talk and shoot from the hip as I'm telling all you people, and hopefully you listen to me, you will hear the excitement in my voice when I'm talking about things I love to talk about. So I want you guys to hit like and share and listen. If you're a wrestling fan, which there's a lot of people that are, that will listen to this show and actually captivate us and, and catapult us into stratospheres of higher levels and actually get the word out because the two of us, we kind of know what we're talking about. So we like to have a good following. And I also know what I'm talking about on the Triple B experiences for my own experiences. Okay. So get it out there. It's getting out there. We just had our first show yesterday. Um, uh, we thought I thought it was real, real good. And we're going to do more and we're going to keep plugging it. So if you guys want to get a hold of us, get a hold of us on our Facebook site. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go out. We got our last segment. We're going to do pulp culture and talk a little bit of other stuff. Okay. But, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Triple B Experience. And I'm your host, Bad Baba Brewer. And you can listen to it all on iHeart, iTunes, IdiotRadio.net, YouTube, and every social device known to mankind. You can listen to this show, The Triple B Experience, and I'm your host, Bad Bubba Brewer. The Steelers are now four and four, and there's peace in the valley. Oh, yes, oh, indeed. Peace in the valley for me. Yes, Pittsburgh, four and four, go on in. The Rams are coming. We'll be five and four, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, you're listening to the Triple B Experience, and I'm your host, Bad Bubba Brewer. The Triple B Experience. We'll return after these messages. Looking for a creative idea for meetings, business lunches, and special events? Call Spiels on Wheels, food truck, and catering, and take the stress away. For more information, call them at 724-244-9881 or on Facebook at facebook.com slash wheels. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Triple B Experience. I'm the host, Bad Bubba Brewer, and glad you guys are listening to episode 17 and I just want to give out a little bit of a shout out to uh, Troy Fritz, who's doing a hobby show. It's called Bunker Mania 2019, his plastic model show and contest. It's at Clyde Fire Hall. Um, 
General admission is three dollars, and under twelve is free. Um, he's got a whole bunch of models. It's going to be registration and judging starts at twelve p.m. Awards to follow, and the grand winner is going to win a, like a heavyweight title. And yours truly is going to be emceeing it. So if you guys in the local area are looking for something to do, come out to Bunker Mania 2019. It's a plastic model show and contest. Contact Troy Fritz because it is, it's a nice one. He had a lot of models the last time I was there emceeing it. And it's my honor to emcee it. So it's going to be a triple B experience uh, doing the show for him that day. So once again, it's Bunker Mania. Plastic Model Show and Contest 2019 at the Clyde Fire Hall. And also, I want to give a big shout out to my nephew, TJ Tagalani, who actually started his first college game at St. Vincent's. They come up short, but I wanted to give him a big plug because he was a freshman going in and starting an offensive guard. Um, so that's a, a, a big kudos to him. He's been working hard. He's a hell of a football player. Um, and I couldn't uh, make it yesterday because I was doing the Triple B and Double D podcast, the heavyweight podcast wrestling show at that time because I couldn't, my schedule just was conflicting and I had to make arrangements to, and I already knew about the podcast show and that we were trying to get it done because I was off, but I'll, I'll see him some more. I guarantee it, but congratulations to him. And like I said, come out and see uh, Bunker Mania 2019. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I've been doing lately besides watching the Steelers, and I told you about what I went to Pittsburgh and all elite, and going down to the Ravens game and almost getting in some deep ass serious trouble. Um, I finally watched, uh, finished watching the Orange is New Black. Um, it was okay. I mean, the series is done. There won't be no more. So, it was an okay ending. Uh, they tied up a whole lot of loose ends. And it was sent off to the pasture. It wasn't the greatest show ever, but they had a couple seasons. And once I start, and I'm not cutting up my goddamn man card, people. I've been told, hey, Bob, we'll cut your man card up. No, I, I like to, you know, it was entertaining. It was funny. Um, I, I, but when you watch something, I have to finish watching it the whole way through. I have slacked off on Gotham. I watched the first season and I didn't go back, but I will go back and re to visit Gotham and finish it out because it's no longer around after five seasons. So, but yeah, if you never got a chance to watch the orange is new black, it's okay. It's sometimes it's funny a couple of seasons. It's, it kind of veers. It's sometimes sad, but it, it's, I don't think life like that is in prison. It's probably way worse because I never been in prison and I don't want to be anytime soon or forever would be great. So I also watched uh, El Camino with the, uh, Jesse Pinkman of the greatest TV show of all time in my mind, Breaking Bad. Um, it ended it the way it should have. Um, you know, and I'm not going to give out any spoilers on that because some people probably haven't seen it yet. But um, I was entertained. Uh, it was okay for me. It ended it right. It wrapped everything up again. Um, and that's it. And Walter White is... Uh, Great fictional character in modern TV history. In my eyes, it was a great show, and it's just that's just the way it is. I'm trying to get uh, done with uh, Glow. I've been watching Arrow and Flash because it's the uh, Inf Infinity Crisis, and it's going to end. Hope I think it's going to end Arrow. It's season ending of Arrow. We'll see what happens there. Um, Stephen Amell is going to go off to greener pastures. Hopefully, he could become some kind of Maybe he can get into movies. Uh, you know, he would be good. He would be good as uh, uh, the new Hawkeye if Jeremy Renner ever gets. Uh, he has some legal trouble. Maybe he would do that or something. Or maybe he could be Arrow in the DC movie universe. That would be good uh, because DC movies actually suck, except for the Joker, which I haven't seen yet. So I haven't seen The Joker, I haven't seen Zombieland, and, I, and the new Terminator movie come out. I have been very busy with work and doing other stuff, and I'm trying to get refocused in on eating. But today I had some M&Ms due to the Steeler game, and uh, I've been taking a log food journal and how I'm doing that. I'm down a couple pounds, and it's a slow, tedious process, ladies and gentlemen, just like my downstairs of my uh, game room slash bar. It's not going to be a game room, so it's going to be more of a bar. 
and I'm working towards that. I got my comic books all in boxes now. I have more room in my studio. So cheers for me. It's all it's all boxed up. I have a few more because I would like to have a table to bring in guests. Not a, I got to be selective. Uh, try to do it where maybe I can actually, uh, you know, do something different. It's always good to do something different and always uh, look for new avenues and do new, more exciting stuff. Because you know how a podcast is. This podcast is not with a script. So I shoot everything from the hip. I've been, uh, I went down yesterday to New Dimensions Comics and that uh, I put it on my uh, Facebook, this big statue of Silver Surfer. And this fucking guy goes to me, he goes, you want that? He's like, it's $12,000. I said, no. I said, there ain't no way. First off, I could take it home and put it. Where the hell am I going to put a $12,000 fucking Silver Surfer statue at? Like in my fucking living room. I'm sure Tammy will love that. Oh, hi, Tam. This is a Silver Surfer statue. We're going to put it in the living room. Set it right by the counter so when we have people come over, he could be the rider of the cosmos. And then he's like, oh, would you want to you want to buy Amazing Spider-Man number one at $10,000? So he tried to fucking upsell me two items that cost $22,000. He must have thought I was fucking walking all water and I had green. You know what I mean? I just work for the Commonwealth. It's not like I'm a rich man. I'm rich in, in other stuff besides cashola, you know. But no, I'm not buying the $12,000 Silver Surfer statue and i'm not buying a ten thousand dollar amazing spider-man comic book i just wanted to see it i would have took a picture of it to put it on facebook and have but he had a photocopy because they have five stories i didn't have it so and i bought a couple uh dollar comics and i've been um trying to get some my uh stuff pieced together and get some stuff out i'm still trying to buy and watch what i do buy because christmas is common Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. You know what I mean? So, and I really don't, Christmas shopping, Christmas is, December is pretty stressful for me. I don't know about you people, but December is pretty stressful. Like right after Thanksgiving, when I'm chowing down like a Viking, because that day there's, I'm not taking a food log that fucking day. That day is turkey day. I'm not going to go crazy, but I'm going to eat my share of turkey. So, but yeah, I mean, that's, I, I've been doing that. I got to put another third coat downstairs. I got to get the bar. I got some ideas for that. I'm off. Uh, not, to, I work this week and the next week I'm off for some days to get stuff done around the house before it gets a little bit cold so I can get stuff done, get the stuff painted, get Black Friday. I want to buy some, some TVs. I know what I want to do, know what I got to get and get the floor done, and get my downstairs done, and get my shower to stop leaking, it's, you know what I mean, so, yeah, so I, I feel everybody when they got stuff to do, and they don't have enough time to do it, I totally understand where you're coming from, so, I like I said, that, those are the last TV shows I watched, I'm, I, I've, I've watched so much, so much wrestling, it's been ungodly due to my other show, the Triple B Double D Heavyweight Podcast. So I know what's going on in wrestling. I just want to announce the wrestlers the right way because I had a problem yesterday when I did that. I My enunciation and pronunciation sometimes gets messed up. And I just want to say the NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Nick Aldis. Nick Aldis. Nick Aldis. I could not say that word yesterday. If you listen to the show... I could not say Nick Otis, Nick Otis, Nick Otis. There it is. He's the heavyweight champion of the NWA, Nick Otis. There, I said it. I won't ever fuck it up again. There won't be any dead time when I'm talking because Nick Otis is your NWA heavyweight champion. I will not fuck that up again. I get fucked off when I do shit like that. But I can do a part. I don't care what anybody says. I did a two-hour podcast without swearing, so I can swear when I want to, and I don't have to swear when I need to. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. If people think that I can't talk intelligent when I'm trying to converse with anything, that's out of their minds. I can talk in a conversation without saying the F word, but on the Triple B experience, you're going to get the real me. You're not going to get artificial flavors here. You're going to get the real me, and that's what it's all about. 
So if I want to swear something a little bit in my thing, hey, God bless America. Okay? So there you have it. Everything pretty much in a nutshell that's been happening since the last time. We did a show in September. Um, everything's going good. Life is good, people. Um, you know, I'm just trying to promote and market the best of my abilities. And with you guys listening to now two of my shows, okay, the ones is the Triple V experience, which is about my experiences and what I like, and the ones about wrestling. Not everybody's going to be a wrestling fan, I understand, but why don't you just take a look at it and see how it's done professionally. Not one curse word. Ha, ha, ha. Not one F word during a whole broadcast. This one here, I probably said the F word 10, 15 times. There you go, people. I know when I can do it and when to turn it off and when to turn it on. It's been done. So just thank you for supporting me. I appreciate all the support. I hope you guys listen to all the shows. This will be 17th once Todd gets it out. It'll be out soon. Okay. But then also, I got 16 other shows. I've been trying to get on SoundCloud just to get me to 100 hits on SoundCloud. Be God bless America. Because of my first WrestleMania show with Todd, when we talked about WrestleMania, we had 1,200 hits. So that's good. That's why we're doing the wrestling stuff. We know what we're talking about. But I would just like to have people to support me in all my endeavors because I support a lot of people, you know. So what I'm saying is just take time to smell the roses, ladies and gentlemen. So here we go. Like I said, this is episode 17. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, I watched a couple things. I bought some comic books. Uh, still a Marvel guy, not a DC guy. I am a DC guy in the TV shows. And pretty soon, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you guys will see me, but pretty soon, Disney streaming is coming. So by the time this is out into my next podcast, I'll probably watch every Disney that you've ever thought of because I'm getting Disney streaming. And I'm definitely going to see The Mandalorian because that's Star Wars that looks kick-ass. And I'll have that done. And I'll have that review hopefully be done before I do my next podcast because I'll review that. And I'm also still watching The Walking Dead and it's actually getting pretty good. Um, so the fear of The Walking Dead was a little crazy, but hopefully somebody still survived at the end of that cliffhanger. But like I said, that's what it is. So ladies and gentlemen, I thank you guys all for letting me rant and rave in your house, in your car, in the gym. Not so much on a lawnmower anymore because the weather's changing. But thank you for listening to the Triple B Experience. You can catch it on SoundCloud, iTunes, iHeartRadio, IdiotRadio.net. You can also listen to the Triple B Double D Heavyweight Wrestling Podcast. Check out my Facebook. You can email me questions of anything you want me to talk about on either show, wrestling or my experiences at badbubba77 at gmail.com. Okay, and I'll get back to you. Okay, but I appreciate all the support. Everybody be safe out there. And I'm your host, Bad Bubba Brewer. And thanks for listening to the Triple B Experience.